Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jack and Joe show where we're coming to you a day earlier than normal. Um, it's the evening now after the night before which was a bit of a sad one but our day's just been made a whole lot better Jack. How are you doing? Yeah it's interesting like one of the lowest of the lows last night not because of like you know we lost to Tottenham I just thought the whole evening wasn't very fun but then to sort of get dragged up by the club. And I think this is a great timing. I think if we hadn't lost last night, or actually, you know what? doesn't matter. If we won, win, lose or draw, they would have perked us up in some sort of way. But yeah, if you haven't seen the news, Marcus Silva signing a new contract, Joe. I mean, that's that's the best news coming out of so far this season. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but let's first uh, hear a word from our sponsors, Green King Sport. Yes, for sure. And there's not long left now um, until the 29th of October when... Until that day, you can get 20% off all drinks at any Green King Sports pub an hour before, during, or up to an hour after any televised sports, including all the football, rugby, dare I say, after the weekend, and cricket World Cup games that are on the box. And to get this deal, you simply have to download the Green King Sports app before you go. Yeah, absolutely. We were on the box last night. Yeah. Uh, 200 feet to Spurs. But... This week, if you want to head to a Green King sport to watch the Premier League action or the cricket or the Rugby World Cup final, I believe. Yep. On Friday night on Sky Sports, you have the pride of South London, Crystal Palace at home to Tottenham, who go again after last night's victory. The 12.30 is our two of our favourite teams in Chelsea and Brentford on TNT Sports. Uh, I might be there. Hmm. Um, OK, and the 5.30, Wolverhampton Wanderers hosting... The Toon Army in Newcastle, who play in the Champions League tomorrow, of course. Sunday is Super Sunday. West Ham United, they host Everton. And the late kickoff, oh, Manchester Derby. Manchester United hosting Man City at the early time of 3.30. And West Ham kickoff at 1. Interesting. Fulham will be playing Brighton that day at the Amex. We'll speak, speak about that later. But Joe, I was on the podcast, which is going to come out tomorrow. But um, give us your thoughts on the game. Uh, because I've already had my say and, you know, it, yeah. it wasn't a great evening. Son and Madison with the goals. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, hmm. What I think is very strange about this is that the whole narrative around Spurs at the moment is that they're they're brilliant and I, I think they're very good. I'll put that out there right now. I think they played well yesterday. I think they were the better team. I think they deserve to win. Um, that being said, I, I found the away game last season so much harder in terms of they were scarier when they came forward. 2-1 um, should have been a lot more than that. They battered us. Mm. Um, they didn't, for me, have the same dominance last night. And that also almost makes it a little bit worse because I was going into it. I predicted 1-1 last week. That was definitely my heart rather than my <laughs> head. I was expecting yeah. to lose, in all honesty, in the stand. Um, but we were well in the game and we had chances and we gifted them the goals. And that's what gets me. You know, we knew all week that somebody was going to be playing on the wrong side of defence and that somebody was Calvin Bassey. Um, and let's face it, he was shaky. And, you know, the first goal, it can happen. You know, people make mistakes, fine. The one that got me and really made me lose my head was the second one, because how are you doing the same thing again? You had just had half time. You know, it's 10 minutes after the break. You probably spent that entire 15 minutes saying you played great first half other than this one moment, and you go out there and you do the exact same bozo gene again. It was just That's ridiculous. Um, I mean, I want to put it out there that Leno, who I don't think I've ever said a bad word against, and rightly so, shouldn't have passed it to Bassi in that instance. He should have launched it. Um, but once Bassi's got the ball, he's in an uncomfortable position. He's being pressed to death. Get rid of it. We're at 1-0. We're in the game. There is no need to take that risk at all. It was like the Mbappé one last season, wasn't it? Like exactly quite similar. The same. Exactly the same. And again, that is a, um, well, it's the other way around, isn't it? It was a right-footed player playing on the left, left back. Yeah. Um, exactly the same thing. And ultimately, you saw the way Sun took that first goal. They've got quality players that take their chances. And that's something that we haven't got at the moment. And that was the difference between the two teams. You know, between our chance of the Polina header, uh, the two Wilson chances in the second half, the Jimenez one was the big one when he went through from an angle. You know, we had enough chances last night to score a couple of goals, not just one. Um, and you think back to Spurs' chances. Yes, they had others 
probably notably the Richarlison one where he put it just wide in the first half. They didn't create too much more. And yes, they brought on what was more comparable to the team that we played against in the Carabao Cup at the end of August um, after they scored the second goal. Because ultimately, I think Ange Postacoglu thought Fulham aren't scoring two. And we've got another game on Friday. And I can't really, you know, have a dig at him for that. We didn't yeah. look like scoring. Um, so it was frustrating for that reason that we weren't thoroughly outplayed. It was avoidable mistakes and bad finishing. And ultimately, that is a uh, two trends that have continued for the majority of this season, Jack. What worries me about that is because of the lack of options we have at centre-back, um, Bassi will continue to play in this position, which is fine. Like, you know, he fills in. But we play against a team on Sunday in Brighton who are just pressing machines and they will catch us out again and again. And they score a ton of goals, um, as we've already seen so far this season. That makes me incredibly nervous uh, for that game against Brighton. Just a word on last night. I thought um, Paulinho came obviously very, very close to taking the lead. That would have changed the complexion of the game. I didn't realise once I watched it back how like far out in the box he was. It wasn't like he was 10, 12 yards out. He was a good 15, 16 yards out. It was a very powerful head and a very good save from Vicario, who I thought had a very good game. You know, I, I I may have left the ground after the second goal went in, but that was for more just getting out of the uh, getting out of the ground and early roll, to beat, is beat the traffic. Yeah, it, it's a spaceship ground. It's a great ground, brilliant ground, but um, yeah, in, in an area that is uh, not not my Vile. favorite part of London. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I try. And Sorry, I, I, I don't things, like it. But, you know, yeah. apologies to anyone that is a, is a fan of the area. Um, it's not quite. It's not quite Hammersmith and Fulham, is it? <laughs> it's not, and and well, I, I don't think it's quite Luton. Put it that way. I don't like Luton, <laughs> um, but I'm also incredibly biased because I just hate the walk back up Seven Sisters Road after a defeat. Um, well, that's interesting because everyone mentions this Seven Sisters Road, but White Hart Lane's like a five minute walk from the ground. Yeah, but it's overground only, and there's huge queues after the game. Uh, um, see, this is why we left it. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. why we left it fifty minutes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Jack, you said a word on Polina. Polina yeah. played well. I think a few of our players did as well. I think that the majority of the, the defence actually had a decent game. Robinson was very good up against Kulisevsky. I thought Ream was fine. Um, Stanier had another game where I think he put in a you know six, seven out of ten performance. You know, offered a bit going forward, but reasonably solid at the back as well. Um, it was our forward players that I thought were poor. And the one that really frustrated me, actually, ironically, was Willian, who had the majority of the mm. ball in the first half and, you know, he's getting fired up by the boos from the Tottenham fans and he has so much space. A few Good. wonderful bits of play like that magical switch over the top to the right-hand side for Bobby Reed, But the amount of the ball he had to not have a shot in the whole game and to essentially not create a chance in the whole game, I think is really poor. And mm. there was a great point made on Twitter that when Willian doesn't play well, the Fulham attack doesn't play well. And I do think that is true. Mm. Um, you know, there were some very poor performances. Bassi was very mistake prone. Pereira was anonymous. Jimenez came on and obviously missed that good chance. Um, Leno, one of those games where he didn't have too much to do. I don't think he had a chance with either of the goals. Um, and then the rest of the midfield, you know, Lukic, I thought, looked very sharp at some moments. But in other times, I thought he just sort of was a bit anonymous. Um, so it was a little bit of either end of the spectrum for him. Um We've got to get it out of our system and we've got to change the game plan, Jack, for um, for Sunday. And I would hope, in what is potentially quite a good segue, potentially not, yeah. that a certain manager will have realised this and it will be Marco Silva's first game since signing against oh, all of that now. Yeah. a new contract. I think let's get into it. I we think it's, it's, it's the biggest news of the season, Jack. Um, he's got an extra two years. He's here until 2026 barring a sacking or him, you know, if there's a release clause, I know, hopefully not. Don't like those two words now because of the Polina thing. Um, but fingers crossed, he will be our manager for years to come. And I think this is the real first sign. Well, the first was him rejecting the Saudi deals. The second is this. And this is the first sign of us having a bit of stability at the club. And I really, really mm. hope that this is a sign that he has basically been given assurances and promises that he will be backed in January and beyond. 
it's, it's, it's great news. I think I think it's it's what was needed. It's a huge lift for the fan yeah. base um, because you know, despite last night, I think the the mood I can tell on you know on social media and in the crowd yesterday is just one of uh, where are we really going this season? And and yeah, I, it's interesting. There's so much to say about this because you know. Four weeks ago, I was of the complete mindset, and I think a lot of people were as well, that Marco's just going to see out his contract and then go elsewhere. And I don't think yeah. anyone could blame him to do that for that because he wasn't backed in Jan um, in the summer, um, despite thinking he might be. He wasn't back last summer in time when you know we still had a lot of questions about our defense going into the opening game last season. Um, so, so there's just, there's been a lot of like mixed messages. You know, Marco reiterated today that his relationship with Shahid Khan and Tony Khan is very good. But, you know, actions speak louder than words. And I don't think that that's sort of been backed up in the in the transfer market as such. Um, then there was the post-match post -match press conference against Sheffield United, where someone had texted and said, oh, apparently Marco's just... Because I wasn't in the room that day. and He just texted uh, saying... Um, Marco's apparently, or you know, sorting out a new contract. It was like he was close to signing a new deal. Yeah, and then what Talksport then put out later was almost along the same lines, but it was just saying that the talks are progressing. But it was almost what we'd heard for a while. You know, it had no one really... sort of took it with any pinch of salt, really. Yeah, no, oh, well, I took it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, um, took it with no. several pinches of salt. Yeah, several pinches. But but normally, like, so the announcement was made today at four o'clock. Normally, you'd hear some sort of rumbling from maybe Peter Rutzler or someone from uh, the Evening Standard, like a, a Dom Smith, perhaps. Um, but but there was like nothing. And I, li I like it when this sort of thing happens. It's a nice surprise. It sort of pops up on your on your phone when you get the notification. You go, oh, my God. I mean, I remember you reacted with extreme happiness. Mine was yeah. more of relief. I'm yeah. quite relieved yeah. he's, he's, he signed a contract because, you know, we were looking at a situation where we, where we could be I think we would have, I think we will stay up this season, but we could be managerless come the summer. But that's now yeah. not going to happen unless he does <laughs> a willy ad where he signs a contract and then <laughs> tries to get pride away. So we're Saudi basically Arabia. we're gearing up for the uh, the Fabrizio Romano exclusive <laughs> that Al Hilal are in talks. Yeah, to... in a, in well, a you know what, mate? Time. They can absolutely <laughs> shove it. I could not <laughs> care about that stupidly. Um, I think this is. I do not want to detract how ecstatic I am that Marco has signed, by the way. I hope he gets a fantastic reception from anyone going to Brighton. Oh, yeah. I am not there. Um, <laughs> I, want to have, I don't want to open this can of worms again. Um, I'm not there. Um, but we're sold out, a, a sold out traveling contingent. Fantastic. It's going to be mm. wonderful. Um, I think that this is our best news since when, Jack? Like I'm honestly trying to think. Um, I can't even since... remember. Well, probably it's the best news since he rejected the Saudi interest formally, but over a longer term. Like I mean, since we beat Chelsea? News since promotion. Like since promotion, all oh, right. Yeah, like the best event, I think. Like it's so huge for the club to have the stability. You know, I don't want to read too much into things. You go down the Instagram post, all the players liking it that he's extended, one of them being Jao Polina. You cannot underestimate how um... much of a pull. The Marco Silva has had on firstly most of the players that have joined the club in the first place, but then those that have decided to stay. I'm thinking of Anthony Robinson, I'm thinking of Polina and Reed as just a couple of examples. Hopefully, Kenny Tete at some point soon as well, and then potentially, you know, someone like Bernd Leno. Fantastic. Um, I think Jack will talk more about this in the weeks to come, but this is fantastic news, and hopefully, we'll see the bearing of the fruits of this in January and beyond. But well, this is the thing, game, I mean. That, sorry, that is something we need to address because, yeah, like like was said in the statement, like was said when Shahid Khan and Tony spoke with Marco in the summer, and then suddenly we got linked to all these centre backs. Calvin Bassi being one of them, we ended up signing him. Yeah, I can't remember the other one was it was um, Sally Sue. That was it. This now has this has to be. Yeah, Marco wouldn't have signed unless there was assurances that he would be backed in either January or the summer, and backed. Yeah. Backed professionally, not in a way that's going to leave half the squad, you know, basically leaving the squad in limbo going into a pre-season where we, we're under staff, not under staff, really, but, but below, I can't speak. <laughs> the squad, basically, yeah. the squad is under par. It yeah. cannot happen again. 
and he will have had to have promises to make sure that isn't the case. But like you said, actions speak louder than words. And if he's not backed, you know... He's been sold down the river. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. unacceptable. And we've um, all been sold down the river, yeah. We've all been sold down the river before. Um, but also sold down the river every transfer window recently, essentially. Um, well, that's the thing, yeah. That has to change. And a striker is necessary. And I think we, unfortunately, with both of our strikers that played last night, saw that how crucial that is. Um, Brighton. Let's get on to Brighton. Uh, tough game. But I want to emphasise that I don't think it's anywhere near as tough as Spurs. And I think Brighton are a very good team. The reason I don't think it's as tough as Tottenham is because I think Tottenham have a better defence. And I think Brighton will cause us many, many problems going forward by more confident of scoring against them than I was against Tottenham. Um, they've leaked 10 in their last three, albeit to very good sides in Aston Villa and Man City and Liverpool. But I think we can get at them and I think we can cause them issues. And I think we can create chances like yesterday. We just have to take them. Um, you said about the playing out the back. We have to change the game plan for this one. Um, we conceded four goals this season now that I can think of off the top of my head where we've lost possession cheaply. Diop versus Brentford, Ream versus Chelsea and the two Bassey ones last night. And ultimately, you know, that's four out of the 15 goals we've let in this season. You factor in the three penalties we've let in. Suddenly that's um, seven out of the 15 goals, that's basically half of the goals we conceded being stupid individual mistakes, which shouldn't have happened. And everyone concedes from individual mistakes. It happens, just not to that degree. Um, I think we need to go more direct with Brighton, be physical. Um, and for that reason, when we get onto the team news, Jack, that's why I'd probably stick with Vinicius. Um, I'd love to hear yeah. your thoughts on who you would go with, who you would change from last night. For the sake of this, we'll assume that Diop and Tosin, Tete and Traore all remain out because it's not the biggest turnaround in the world just under a week. Um, but I'd love to know what team you would start with, Jack. OK, just a word on Brighton, um, just quickly. Just yeah. looking at the way they, they lined up against, of course, Manchester City. But, you know, I, you know, I watched the highlights. I'm pretty sure you probably watched the highlights. They, I mean, they yeah. played very well in that game. And that's against the Manchester City team who, you know, at home or even away, they dominate they absolutely dominate uh and you know they only beat them 2-1 and you know made it quite uncomfortable for City in the end he went down to 10 men with Manuela Kanji getting a second booking what is interesting to highlight in this game or for this game is that James Milner who started at right back was pulled at half time for Joel Veltman who came on um it's obviously very important to now say that Brighton were playing Thursday night yes against an Ajax team who I don't know what the hell is going on at Ajax right now, but I mean, it's a European game. It's going to be a tough game for Brighton. It's, it's probably must win for them as well, isn't it? Because if you look at the fixtures that they've had mm. so far, losing their first game and drawing their second, you know, From to get line, through this yeah. group, they have to start winning now. Um, so, which makes me think, as I'm sure you're alluding to Jack, they can't rotate that heavily, despite Ajax not being um, in the best form. I think the Ajax game is much bigger than our game against them. Um, and therefore, yes. they will probably prioritise that. We, we, I mean, that's good news for us. It's also worth mentioning that Danny Welbeck went off injured. I don't see Danny Welbeck as the threat he was when he was at Manchester United and Arsenal. But um, but you know that's that's obviously important. Mitoma, Yao Pedro, they got Evan Ferguson on the bench. Billy Gilmore came off the bench. Van Heck, a very very capable defender. We've seen that at the Championship level when he was at Blackburn Rovers. Um, he came off the bench. Looking at their injury list, they've still got no Enciso, who's out for a very long time with a knee injury. Estupinian is still injured. Lamptey is injured. And Moda is injured. Um, but I, I expect them to sort of line up in a similar way they did against Manchester City. Um, also, Jack, by the way, um, I only found this out just before we recorded, but Solly March actually got stretched off in added time oh. at City. Um, so that's another one added to the injury list as of the very end of that City game. Okay, Obviously, so that, I mean, a very, a very important player for them. Very important. He he gets he gets serenaded by the uh, Brighton fans every time I see Brighton play. They they're always singing that Solly March song, which is of course is quite a simple. So on to Fulham team news. Um, I mean, is this difficult because you you can't drop Bassey after last night because we don't really have any other option. Um, 
you could maybe switch Vasi onto the left and then Rio onto the right just to see what happens. But again, yeah. that just that that doesn't fill with a load of confidence. Robinson keeps his place. Castagna, if if Tete's, I reckon Castagna probably yeah keeps his place. Oh, Paulinia. There was a big old debate about Pereira as well, whether we start dropping Pereira. I'm actually going to push the button and say we're going to go with Paulinia, Lukic, Awobi, and then start... Mm, okay, Willian, Vinicius up top, Harry Wilson from the start for me. Uh, nothing against Bobby Reid. I feel like every time I drop Bobby yeah. Reid, I have to sort of justify it, but Harry Wilson just gives us a little bit more going forward. Of course, Bobby Reid started up front against Brighton last season. Um, but it was Vinicius who set up the goal for Solomon in the last minute, the smash and grab. What about you? What's your team? And what are you expecting from this game as well? Is it going to be as one side as it was last season? So for the, for the team, firstly, um, agree with your defence and agree with your midfield 100%. Um, I think in terms of the way that I'd look at the Pereira debate, I thought it was so anonymous last night, aside from that corner to um, Polina's mm. head in the 12th minute or whatever it was. Um, I think my choice for the more attacking midfielder would go Awobi first choice for this game, Kearney second, because I thought oh. Kearney made a big impact when he came on against both Sheffield United and last night against Tottenham. Um, I keep Lukic in. Uh, I would be absolutely fine with Harrison Reed coming in, but um, Lukic, I, I saw enough from him to be comfortable with him starting again. Um, and Awobi, I think he made an impact at half time in terms of just being slightly more involved than Pereira. I mean, it was a, a low bar to beat, in all honesty. Pereira had a poor game. It happens, but it's happened too much with him recently. Uh, front three, Willian, yet yeah, no other option really, um, with no disrespect to him, but you know, there's no one pushing him for his place at the moment. Uh, Vinicius up top, as opposed to Jimenez. We need someone that can hold it up slightly better. Um, and then on the right-hand side, I mean, I've got to say, I thought that Bobby Reed versus Harry Wilson's cameo yesterday was literally battle of the absolute bang average like it was both just so uninspiring and Wilson going through on goal in the last minute I mean I wanted to just shoot off home then to be honest with you Jack I mean you weren't there so to, to summarize what happened I've seen it ball, I've seen it yeah the ball went through to him by the time he'd got it under control there was about five Tottenham players back when he was literally through on goal and it was all about getting it onto his right foot I know players have a stronger foot you're a professional footballer Sometimes you can shoot with your right. I mean, I do want to add that message to Tom Kearney as well, as much as I love the guy. You know, <laughs> you're, you're in your 30s. You can use your right, mate. Like, you train <laughs> seven days a week. Um, anyway, sorry, I'm getting off. Just, I think that I would go with, I think I'd go with Bobby Reed. just. The reason for okay. that is more of a defensive work rate. And I think that when we're going up against a team, you ask what I expect from the game. I expect a really tough attacking test. I don't expect it to be as one-sided as last year, but I expect them to score, unlike last year. I expect them to probably score a couple. And it's just whether we can catch them out at the other end. Um, what am I expecting in terms of scoreline? I've got to be honest with you. I would take a draw 100% in this one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I actually think we're going to get it, which I think might surprise you. I actually think we're going to get a draw here. Um, I don't know why I think this, because I saw nothing last night to convince me that we can score a goal. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going with 1-1. One, one. And I don't know why. I think it's yeah, blind right. optimism, just sort of expecting, you know, everyone was a bit on low, but then the Marco Silva contract news has come out. I want a reaction. I want to score against them. They're leaky at the back. Let's do it. 1-1. One, one. Yeah. You're more positive than me because I was going to predict us to lose. Yeah, it's but... bizarre that every single thing I said was negative, apart from my <laughs> score prediction. Oh, I mean, I was going to say 2-1 Brighton, but I forgot about the Marco Silva news, even though we just spoke about it about 10 minutes ago. So, so basically, um, Marco Silva end, tax, we're drawing. I think Desmond. <laughs> we're scoring two? Goodness yeah. gracious, Ben me. I'm not sure about that, but happy days. <laughs> I, I want to ask you a, 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 a last question before we go. Yeah. I thought, oh, we'll be coming on at half-time, fine. But but taking Vinicius off of Raul Jimenez at half-time, interesting. And what were your thoughts? Um, my initial thought was, should I have got a full pint rather than a half and <laughs> not got back to my seat on time? <laughs> um, no, in, in all seriousness, um, I thought that there was definitely a place for him in his last night. And you saw that with the chance he got in terms of someone that can run in behind. 
And ultimately, Jimenez was more involved in terms of goal scoring chances, which is what Silva wanted. The problem with that substitution was that we lost the hold up aspect that Vinicius was doing quite well in the he first half, in yeah. bringing in both of our wingers, more so Willian on the left, into play. And we lost that. I think that the way to go, and it wouldn't have happened, was to go slightly later in the game, go two up top, um, if we were still in the game. Um, but ultimately that didn't happen. So basically I can see the thinking, I wouldn't have done it at that stage in the game. I think we needed to stay in the game a bit longer, have the hold up play from Vinicius that Jimenez wasn't really offering. But I would have definitely brought Jimenez on at some point, 100%. I just don't think it would have been then. Mm. I think that Awobi for Pereira sub was absolutely right. I'll tell you what sub I really disagreed with was Lukic off for um, Harrison Reed, And that's not saying that I didn't want Harrison Reed involved, but I think that's when you should have brought Kearney on. Um, and we shouldn't have waited to bring off Polina for Kearney. It should have been the other way around. Um, I think that Reed is slightly more attacking than Polina. I think that Kearney is more attacking than Lukic. So you bring on your more attacking player first, in my opinion. Um, and you've still got the cover of, you know, Polina behind. Um, that's just me. You know, we improved when both of those players came on anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, that was my take on it, Jack. Yeah, I think. I think that's fair enough. Um, Marco Silva signs a new contract and makes two subs at half time. He is a changed man. Would you believe it? Um, it would be interesting to see what he says on Friday for his press conference. I've, I'm just going to guess he's going to say something like, you know, I have the backing of the board. But like we mentioned earlier, we have to see the fruits of this now. And oh, actually, it is worth mentioning as well that you put in the chat earlier that we are linked. Yes. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Garassi. Garassi. Apparently, he is like the informed player in the Bundesliga. He is right in now. the most red hot form possible. Um, and it seems a bit potentially flash in the pan in terms of his stats previously, but it's continuing long on before um, people have been saying that for weeks, essentially. And it's still going on. Um, he's got a release clause that's under 20 million, just over 15, I believe, maybe 17.5, something like that. Um, but just I think the 15. whole of Europe. Is, oh, it's just 15. Fantastic. I think the whole yeah, of Europe is going to be after him. Um, but we need a striker. We're in London. Let's give it a go. Um, whether he comes in January is another thing. Because we do need a striker in January. That's the thing. We can't wait until the summer. Whether we bring in a second one in the summer, fine. But we need one in January, 100%. No two ways about it. I do want to point out there, Jack, that as, as negative as everyone's been, I feel like there's a collective sense of, at this moment in time, it does feel like we are going to be fine we're just not going to be doing anything pulling up any trees this season That's, and yeah sometimes that happens you know um we'd have killed for this a few years ago um, as i said as that, it's know, boring, yeah. fall off a cliff you know mid table can be boring this is what we've all been wanting ultimately i don't want the you know heart failure as a result of being stressed every season of are we going to get promoted are we going to go down sometimes the stress of are we going to end the season 14th on goal difference or 13th on goal scored is quite a nice one. You know, mm -hmm. it's we, we can build from here. And that's the thing that annoys people is that we had the chance to build last summer. Marco Silva signing makes me confident that we can do it next summer at the very least. So yeah. fingers crossed we start to see the, well, start to bear the fruits of that, as you said, Jack. Yeah, the, fa the foundations are there to build on. I remember saying to you last season that when you're a mid-table team like us, it's very, very dangerous to have a switch of mentality yeah. because suddenly if you start falling out of love with either the players or the manager or the system, you're basically wanting to freshen things up for the sake of freshening things up. When actually, we do have quite a good thing going right now. It's just that we can't score a goal at the moment. I think um, someone said yeah. the point brilliantly yesterday. It was a, uh, I think it was a Manchester United fan that I follow Um or uh, don't follow now, it's just on like the For You section of um, mm. Twitter or X. Um, mm -hmm. Bird app. Um, the, the, the letter app. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Um, <laughs> um, what did he say? He said, Fulham's game plan was spot on, just didn't have the players to do it last night. And by that, mm -hmm. we basically mean we didn't have the right foot centre-back, not our fault with injuries. Um, you know, let's face it, we have two we're very unlucky they're both injured at the same time. Um, mm. And that's before even getting into squad building. Should we have three? I think I think actually two is fine. We just got unlucky. Um, 
and we need a centre forward that can put the goals away. The final ball was poor. We need an attacking midfielder that can do that job. And ultimately, Spurs had the things we didn't last night. They had the defenders that could basically eliminate those mistakes. They had the forwards that could score the goals and do the final ball. And that is the difference between these top sides. That's why they're at the top of the league. A lot of the games, not all, but a lot of them, are quite even. We saw that last mm. season when we lost pretty much every single one against the top six by one goal, other than the mm. odd game where we got, you know, on the wrong end of a battering, such as Arsenal or Arsenal. Newcastle. Yeah. Um, that's what separates them, and that's why they pay the top dollar for those players. But if you can back Marco Silva, I always back him to keep us in the game. Um, with his tactics and mm. we will hopefully have the players soon to be able to to do that at a better scale than we can right now. Uh, I think it's important to stay optimistic, especially given this news that's come out today. Spurs are a very, very good team and I think, you know, will they push for a title? Maybe, maybe. Um, but there is, there's something very likeable about Ange Postecoglou and the project they've got going on there. I was just going to say to you, finally, um, we still haven't used any domestic loans this season. It comes to January. Yes. I will be knocking on, for my sins, Chelsea's door and saying, look, you've got Nkunku coming back soon. You've got Raheem yeah. Sterling, Cole Palmer, all doing very well. Let us have Armando Broja just at the end of the season. Yeah. I'll be all for that. And the final question for you is, I can't remember who put it on Twitter. It might have been Peter Rutzler. But there's room, there's rumours now that Tosin's <laughs> looking at signing a new contract. Did I dream yeah. that? The most sensational plot twist ever. He has put down his match attacks and he's about to sign <laughs> on the deadline. Um, what a weird turn of events that would be. And I'd be all for it. I like yeah, Tosin. Yeah. Um, I, I'd rather he was a Fulham player. I still sort of feel like it won't happen, but that's just because of how long it's been rumbling on for. Like, I sort of can't imagine him him staying beyond this season now. Um, oh, Peter Rutz also confirmed, you know, there was sort of the rumours that we sort of, believed as well that like maybe the injury wasn't real because it all sort of felt a bit coincidental colliding with the transfer yeah, rumors yeah. it yeah. sounds like after the window was closed he had surgery and that's what he's coming back from and he's now in individual training ready to return with this team soon so fingers crossed we can see him involved um I, I, like you said jack the domestic loans is a great point uh you know you could lock on as you say chelsea's door for Broja. you could knock on arsenal's door for Nketiah yes, if yeah. they bring in Tony in January, which sounds like a possibility. There's yeah. plenty of teams around the league that have strikers that we could get until the end of the season. Um, I just really hope yeah. we get someone permanently, but we do have options with the loan market, as you say. We need some points on the board soon, but we've got some tricky games coming up. Um, I remember actually, sorry, Silver saying that Tosin's two or three weeks away from, you know, training with the first team again, which is good news. And by what he was saying and the way he was saying it, it didn't seem like anything was amiss. But then again, you could say that with a pinch of salt. Joe, it's been a bit of a marathon today. Despite yeah. defeat, we're in we're in high spirits. Thank, high thanks spirits. so much for being here. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jack. Thanks everyone for watching. Enjoy Brighton if you're going. Um, and if not, then enjoy it anyway. Enjoy it uh, on a maybe stream <laughs> if i speak telly. i am in gigantic <laughs> trouble with the authorities i'm gonna be heading down to the amex on sunday afternoon for a pizza in brighton then we're going to the ground like of course we know, a, we know he's in charge of those plans <laughs> thanks so much for watching and well despite defeat it's a big old cup of fulham <laughs>